with us tonight. I'm Chris Hosh. And I'm Alina Machado. Tropical Storm Ian is expected to turn into a major hurricane as it continues to move toward the United States. We are keeping a close eye on Ian and have team coverage tonight with hurricane specialist John Morales. But let's begin with first alert meteorologist Steve McLaughlin, who just received the latest advisory. Steve. It's still a tropical storm winds just a little bit stronger than our five o'clock and eight o'clock advisories were up to 50 miles per hour. Once this storm gets to 74, it becomes a hurricane that happens probably overnight into tomorrow morning. In fact, we could have winds up to 80 miles per hour by tomorrow evening, a category two by Monday morning. Category three by Monday evening and then a category four and now peaking out by Tuesday evening at category four with winds of 140. So that's the bad news. The good news for South Florida, the trend continues to be west. There is no part of South Florida that is currently in the cone of concern. But John Morales, as I toss it to you, I have been looking at all of our rain and wind models. And even though this storm might be nowhere near Miami and Fort Lauderdale, there's still going to be a lot of rain as early as Monday morning. And each band that comes through could theoretically give us a quick tropical storm gust, even though we're not getting tropical storm conditions. Yeah, and I agree, Steve. Uh, we could definitely see a gust or two to tropical storm force, but we would not see the sustained winds at tropical storm force given this forecast path, which would have the center of, yes, what would be a very powerful Category 4 hurricane, but it would be passing 200 miles away from Miami, which is a lot further than Hurricane Irma passed from our region. Irma passed 90 miles away to the west. 200 miles away, that's a big difference. I don't care how big the hurricane is. So big deal there. And uh, for Key West as well, about 200 mile distance away from the area. So uh, the forecast cone you're looking at, and we're going to shift here to show you the wind field from this hurricane as it would be passing to the west of Key West. Now, I said 200 miles west of Miami. I, I actually should correct that. 280 miles west of Miami and about 200 miles west of Key West. So imagine as the storm continues to move towards the north northeast uh, in this fashion. Let's see if I can get this to draw on the screen like this. You're going to see those tropical storm force winds in yellow uh, stay out over the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, Key West, uh, Key West is right in this spot right there right there. So, I mean, this little dot over here, the, those are the dry tortugas. So that's a difference there that those tropical storm force winds would stay away. These are the probabilities for tropical storm force winds as you see them now. And before I put the numbers up on the screen, you know, take a look at where where the, the highest concentration for those those highest chances are, right? We're talking to the west of, of uh, Grand Cayman and then on the far east, western tip, far western tip of Cuba, uh, that's where the highest probability is. And then it tends to nudge towards the north and northeast, closer to uh, the uh, Tampa Bay area, and then eventually towards the Florida panhandle. Now, chances are right now up to 68% in Grand Cayman, about 60% in Havana, a 45% chance of tropical storm force winds in Key West, but Miami only has a 16% chance this evening. So here's the broader view of the satellite picture, and uh, Ian tonight is starting to get that look. It's got that circulation going. I'll zoom in here, and you can tell that there's there are bursts of showers and thunderstorms growing in, in, in uh, cycles here. It's not constantly going, but it is getting its act together, heading into some very warm waters. And yes, a lack of upper level wind shear. Remember yesterday when we had, uh, you know, all this strong northeasterly wind shear going on? Well, not tonight. I mean, this area here is pretty much devoid of any of that. So it doesn't have those upper level winds uh, to, well, chop its head off, if you will. And then at the bottom, it's got those 87 degree sea surface temperatures, which are likely going to make Ian intensify rather quickly over the next 24 hours as it heads towards Cuba and then the Gulf of Mexico. Back to you.